let us continue the discussion about Atomic Habits by James Clear. The fourth law, make it satisfying. We are more likely to repeat a behavior if the experience is satisfying. Good habits are hard to be cultivated and sustained because the process is unpleasant and torturing. It is a long-term investment that we cannot expect an immediate reward. We exercise in order to get a healthier and fitter body. We save money because we want an early retirement. However, most of the time, we cannot see a significant and satisfying improvement towards our goal. On the other hand, bad habits can be satisfying as they can provide positive results and rewards in a short time. Even though we know their drawbacks in the long run, we will also go for it because we are interested in immediate satisfaction. For example, we know that smoking is bad for our health and can cause lung cancer. Many people still smoke because it is their way to release stress. This same goes with drug addiction. The consequence is delayed, but the reward is immediate. As your brain values the present more than the future, it is hard to break bad habits. To form a good habit, our brain has to feel happy and satisfied while doing it so that there is less friction when we are trying to repeat it. Therefore, we can give ourselves a small reward after the habit, even for the slightest improvement. This is how we can motivate ourselves to stick to it. The first law mentioned is to increase the odd of the habits being performed, while the last law provide the golden opportunity for them to be repeated. This completes the habit loop. If you are trying to slim down, you can buy yourselves new clothes or go to catch a movie after you have done your exercise. These are the rewards that can be obtained immediately. You will have the incentive to repeat it next time. Take note that the reward cannot go against the habit but reinforce our identity. There is no way for you to eat junk food and ice cream after exercising if you want to slim down. Incentive starts a habit but identity sustains it. The sweeter the first fruit of a habit, the more bitter are its later fruits. To make our habit satisfying, showing that we are making progress towards our ultimate goal is one of the most effective methods. It will reinforce our identity with some immediate satisfaction and gratification. For example, you can put a tick on the calendar if you exercise that day. You can open an account named Travel to Europe and put in money whenever you stop yourself from frivolous purchases. These are the evidence that you are doing the right thing. When we start to track down whether we have carried out our habits, especially when you have put in lots of effort to maintain the stream, your brain will tell you not to break the chain. When you look at the calendar in the morning, you will notice those ticks on it, which make the habit obvious. It is attractive to keep the chain ongoing. When you see the whole page of the calendar is occupied with ticks, you will be satisfied. The habit will also be more obvious on the next day. It will form a positive feedback loop. Habit tracking transfers our attention from the result to the process. You are not focusing on the grade of the English exams, you are trying to learn 10 vocabulary words every day. You are not focusing on the six-pack abs, you are trying to become the type of person who will not miss workouts. You are not focusing on the number of subscribers, you are trying to post videos every week. These help us to stay motivated for the delayed rewards to arrive. If tracking down the habit is challenging for you, you can use the habit stacking method. After you have exercised, you will put a tick on the calendar. If your habit breaks down due to some unexpected and inevitable events, you have to remind yourself, never miss twice in a row. Missing once is an accident, missing twice is a habit. The breaking of a habit doesn't matter if the reclaiming of it is fast. It is acceptable to relax when you are sick or feeling down, but the main thing is to avoid the second lapse. Each small win feeds your desire. 
When we are just a kid, whenever we do something wrong, we will get a whip from the elders. Actually, they are trying to let us know that it is wrong, you should not do it again and bear it in mind. Whatever is punished should not be repeated is encoded in our brain. We don't want to be punished so we are motivated to behave correctly. To further illustrate this point, you don't want to be fined so you obey traffic rules. You don't want to be scolded so you arrive at school punctually. Why don't we use the same way to deal with bad habits? Bad habits are hard to be broken as they serve us in a certain way, even though we know that they will lead to negative impacts in the long run. For example, all of us know that soaking may cause lung cancer. However, it still cannot stop them from smoking. They feel happy and relaxed at that moment and they don't care about the uncertain consequences. Therefore, if the immediate punishment costs more than the immediate reward, we will stop doing it. Being fined $2,000 or scolded costs more than waking up 5 minutes earlier. Hence, you will obey the traffic rule and be punctual. Habit contract is the method to produce the immediate punishment. A habit contract is a verbal or written agreement in which you state your commitment to a particular habit and the punishment that will occur if you don't follow through. If you want to stop spending too much time on video games, you can tell your mom to deduct $10 from your pocket money if you spend over one hour on it in a day. Playing video games for a long time is unsatisfying as the immediate consequence is painful. In the book How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie also introduces a similar strategy to motivate ourselves to apply the principle mentioned in our daily routine. Behavior only shifts if the punishment is painful enough and reliably enforced. Feel free to share your thoughts. Remember to subscribe, like and share.